first of all, the with the local government mayor, not that he took me there. Okay, I actually called him um, and requested that we should go <coughs> them together. And, and in responding to that question, I will be also addressing invariably some other questions that have to do with black spots and so on. There's a concept known as crime prevention through environmental design. So uh, what it basically implies is that the nature or the character of an environment can be deliberately um, engineered to prevent crimes. Okay, the flip side to that is that the nature or character of certain environments can also encourage crimes. So the spot that you were referring to, that um, you said the mayor took me to, is the spot known as down below, okay, uh, which is a, a notorious area in the police parlance or in the enforcement parlance. We could be, we could refer to that place as black spot. Now, um, our analysis of that place implies that the environment itself encourages crime. So the reason I asked the mayor to go with me is because we observed that it is the environment itself that encourages crime. So it's not enough that you go there every day, you conduct a raid, you pursue people, you chase them, you arrest people, tomorrow other people will go there. In fact, somebody told me that for over 10 years, that had been the routine. So you cannot be doing the same thing and be expecting a different result. So the reason I asked the mayor to go with me is because there are certain things that are beyond our purview as law enforcement agency. But in collaborating with other partners and stakeholders that have different roles to play, we can apply that concept of crime prevention through environmental design to prevent crime. As a matter of fact, for us in this command, um, collaborating with other agencies and other stakeholders, we came up at the beginning of this year with a four-pronged strategy, okay, to contain, if not um, eliminate violent crimes, especially um, kidnapping and armed robbery. And the strategy is what we call prevent, disrupt, detect and delete. So PD3. Okay. But our main effort is on prevention because like we know that a stitch in time saves nine and prevention is better than kill. So when somebody has been robbed or somebody has been kidnapped and then you now want to detect and so on, somebody is already going through trauma. Okay. I will not tell you the details of the tactics that make up the the component, the, the prevent component, okay? But the point is that we are already deploying some aspects of the prevent component of that strategy, and we know that they are yielding results, okay? So back to what I was saying, the current prevention through environmental design implies that you can take proactive measures at ensuring that environments, the physical environment, okay, are designed or um, or structured in such a manner that we prevent crimes, okay? And it could include things like having the public to install CCTV cameras at, at their local uh, businesses or even um, residential places, having the environment to be properly lit and so on, you know, and several other things that can be done. So that's the reason we went with the local government mayor, okay, to see what can be done together to create an environment that will prevent crime versus going at intervals to arrest people and prosecute them and then you have what you call um, 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 in displacement, crime displacement. There are several kinds of, about five different kinds of crime displacement. Okay, you also have the, the, the criminal displacement. In other words, you arrest somebody today, okay, you take him off the system by way of prosecutors, get jailed, another person replaces 
that person. That's a, it's called offender displacement. Okay, so you continue to do that, other offenders will be coming up. But if you if you are proactive enough to take a lasting measure, like redesigning the environment, okay, in such a way that it becomes uh, inconducive, it, it, it's, it's no longer conducive for those kind of crimes and criminals to infest the area. You know, so that's what we try to do or what we are working on, basically. But it's not going to be restricted to that place where the investigation is concluded, okay? The report we got was that somebody drowned at a swimming pool, okay? So if somebody was swimming and got drowned, okay, um, I don't know, there might be certain circumstances that will require that people will be, will be arrested, okay? but. For what offenses will they be arrested? Okay, so as we continue with the investigation, whatever evidence that comes our way that requires that someone will be arrested, we would arrest the person and continue with the investigation until we resolve that whole um, that whole crime or that whole case, okay, or incident. You know now. But to answer your question directly, we have interviewed some people, we have interfaced with some people. Okay, in the course of our investigation, okay, and um, I, what I can tell you is that nobody is in our detention as we speak as a result of that incident. Okay, but the investigation is ongoing, and at any point in time that it, it, it requires that somebody be brought in um, into our custody in the course of that investigation, we will do that. Now, I would I know that perhaps another question will be. Um, or uh, part of what you are alluding to in that question is the alleged involvement of of um, military personnel. Okay, now you know that the military they have their own um, standards for discipline and investigation. In fact, the military they also have a court recognized by the constitution, which is court martial. Okay, so and I know that the military are investigating their personnel that are that are alleged to have been involved in that matter, okay? And as we are collaborating and cooperating in looking into that whole incident, okay, um, when it becomes necessary to prosecute anybody, whether military or civilian, that will be done, okay? Usually, if a military person is found to have offended the law, if the person is caught martial and found guilty, they can actually even go to jail based on that guilty, uh, being found guilty. Okay, depending on the on the you know, the severity of the situation, and if it's such that the police will also take over and maybe conclude investigation and prosecute, that will also be done. So, but the assurance I would want to give to the listening public or the viewing public is that together we will work hand in hand and we we'll make sure that justice is served. Okay, I'm um, in touch with the the brigade commander who's a gentleman, you know, to the core, and we will make sure that whoever is answerable um, is brought to book. Um, the matter about uh, the YouTube incident that went viral, where somebody said that the video uh, depicted two persons, but only one person uh, has been arrested. Correct. The good thing is that the person we arrested, that is in our custody now, is the one who did the shooting. I have personally talked with him. Uh, I even have a video recording of my interview with him, and he didn't deny shooting. He clearly said he shot the person, he gave his reasons which are very flimsy. So he gave his reasons for shooting, he accepted that he killed. So, however, we are not leaving the other suspect um, to go free. The answer to your question is that we will go ahead with our investigation until we also bring him um, into custody and make him to face does not mean that he has not committed any offense. Okay, so we'll make sure that we bring him in. The Aba incident, the question was would we make the results or the report or the outcome of investigation public? The answer is emphatic yes. 
I don't know if I should say anything about that, but the answer to that is that it's not even just making the outcome of the investigation public. Even the process of investigation and trial would be done in such a way that critical stakeholders uh, will be transparent about it in the sense that if the family of the bereaved or if in the bereaved family or their representatives would agree they can be present at every stage of what we are doing okay going forward if they are comfortable with that we will welcome it but if they prefer that we keep them we keep them regularly updated we will also do that um, we have interfaced with the with critical stakeholders but i'm also going to have a meeting uh, within the week today so we're in the new week within the week with um with the representatives is at that point that would determine how to go ahead with it in terms of the transparency aspect of it but i want to assure the public that the police under the current ig and this command will not cover or shield anybody that has done something that is unprofessional no matter how me to let alone if it results in somebody's death so when we are done with our investigations um definitely the officer involved uh, would bear the consequences of whatever misdeed that he is found guilty of having committed thank you